Hello, my name is Mike Hansbro, and I'm an area resource biologist with the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service here in the great state of Tennessee. First, I want to thank all the folks at the University of Tennessee Extension Service like Dr. Blake Brown, Dr. David Merker, Ginger Rousey, and the other wonderful folks at the University of Tennessee Extension for inviting me to be a speaker at this year's Mile and No-Till Field Day and helping me with this video. You know, I first spoke at the field day in 2004 under a big white tent. It's a much different uh, backdrop than this. And we had a, a, an area of native warm season grasses that we helped to establish. And we had lots of people moving in and out, but these are different times. And with COVID-19 and the precautions that we need to take, we're using a different approach. So we are filming this on my property and on a couple other farms nearby. So I hope you enjoy the tour. Today I'm going to talk about forestry and wildlife opportunities in USDA programs. I'm really going to focus on select conservation practices and a few of our major programs that we have in our area. But if you're outside Tennessee, I encourage you to go down to your USDA service center and talk to your NRCS staff and find out what is available in your state and in your area. The foundation of what we do as an agency is to give landowners and participants conservation advice and introduce them to our conservation practices. Conservation practices are the primary scientific technical guides for NRCS and contain good information on the conservation of soil, water, air, and related plant and animal resources and energy. We put all this information into a conservation practice standard, which are developed locally in each state. And you can find those on our website underneath the field office technical guide for your state. Now this may sound a little technical at first, but hopefully it will make sense to you as I talk about your potential conservation opportunities. For example, if you had field erosion, you wanted to plant something to help control the soil loss, then you might use a practice like conservation cover, critical area planting, or mulching. Now I just told you three conservation practices, so now you're on your way to understanding our conservation planning process. Now there are many different conservation practice names to me to discuss here, but I will try and highlight some of the ones that can help you change your property with the forestry and wildlife benefits. Some of my favorite conservation practices are herbaceous weed control, brush control, cover crop, field borders, fire breaks, prescribed burning, filter strips, repairing forest buffers, stream crossings, wetland restoration, early successional habitat development and management, forest trails and landings, and upland wildlife habitat management. And let's not forget forest stand improvement. Better stop now, but if you want to know more about the individual conservation practice, you should check out our NRCS YouTube channel and search for one of my favorite conservation practices. Well, we're at a typical loblolly pine stand in Tennessee. Um, in this area, this was planted in 1997. It's overstocked, meaning we've got too many individual trees per acre with this size DBH. So what do you do with that when you have too many trees per acre? Well, if you get a forest management plan, you might be able to thin this out using one of our programs like Equip or CSP. There's options for you. So one thing we get some calls on, and it's a resource concern that a lot of people have, is invasive species. And we're standing here in a field of kudzu, and a lot of people have kudzu problems. So what do you do about it? Well, that's an equip, fix it program type of application. So here you can see where we have kudzu, and if we walk this way, we're gonna slowly go over here, and you see where we have an area that the kudzu has been eliminated. And we eliminate this through a couple different practices, conservation practices like herbaceous weed control or brush management. So if you have this problem on your property, maybe you should come in and talk to us in our USDA service centers. You know, we have a practice named Upland Wildlife Habitat Management and it includes things like planting perennial clovers and annuals for wildlife. Now, we're standing in a clover plot that's at least 20 inches tall. And if you do it right, and we're the ones to help you with that, you can really put some great wildlife cover on your property. 
This could be any program from Equip to CSP. Lots of opportunity here. So let's talk a little bit of forestry now. You have trees like this giant white oak and others are very important for wildlife of many different types. But for NRCS to help you plan activities in a forest is really important. I cannot stress upon how important it is to get a forest management plan. Now you can go out and you can hire a forester to write that plan. Maybe you can get some assistance from uh, state foresters. But we also have the ability to put you in for an EQIP 106 CAP plan, Conservation Activity Plan, to write a forest management plan. So that's an EQIP application to get maybe some cost share for a forest management plan. We're here, and this is a real gem in the woods. This is a short leaf pine, a once common pine, not as common as we'd like to see it now. Uh, it's been replaced by loblolly plantings and just lack of forest management. But this is a real jewel to find these days. And in EQIP, we have some practices like tree and shrub establishment, 490 site prep to get this back on the landscape. So if you're interested in establishing some short leaf pine, please come in and let us know. Hey folks, what are you doing with your forest? Are you managing your forest? Do you have a good forest management plan that I've talked about? Can you do one of our NRCS practice, like the forest timber stand improvement practice, where maybe your forest management plan calls for taking out undesirables like this maple in the understory or midstory. Maybe you need to have a harvest. So those are great opportunities that you as a landowner should take, some, take into some consideration really. Another point would be when we manage our forest, a lot of people think that we're just managing the forest on the harvest, some type of cut. And those might be 15, 20, 45 years. Or can we do something to improve the forest, like a timber stand improvement practice that NRCS has in some of our programs like EQIP and CSP. So think about that the next time you want to get rid of maples in the understory or other undesirables. Okay. Healthy forests have a diversity of habitats. Some forests, you might have a lot of leaf litter, and that might be a function of you just got a closed canopy, you might be overstocked, but there are a lot of wildlife species that we want to have some understory. We want to have some good, thick, herbaceous cover. We want to have some sunlight hitting the forest floor. Well, we've got some programs to help with that. No one knows more about your land than you do, and no one knows more about conservation planning than the NRCS. Together we can develop a plan tailored to your operation and your goals to help increase productivity and protect the value of your land. The Conservation Stewardship Program, I like to call it CSP, offers an opportunity for forest land managers and wildlife producers and agricultural producers to enhance their agricultural operations while adopting conservation activities that improve crop quality, maybe you're improving soil health, and water quality. CSP can help you plan and implement those conservation practices and enhancements that address natural resources concerns on your operation. CSP pays participants for conservation performance. The higher the performance, the higher the payment. And it addresses a wide variety of concerns. How does this work? Well, CSP really provides two possible types of payments through five-year contracts. Annual payments for installing new conservation activities and maintaining existing practices and supplemental payments for adopting a resource conserving crop rotation or some other type of environmental enhancement. CSP helps build on your existing conservation efforts while strengthening your operation. Whenever you are looking to improve tree stands, suppress weeds, or develop wildlife habitat, we can custom design a CSP plan to meet those goals. We can help you schedule timely planting of pollinator plants, implementing grazing management to improve wildlife and develop repairing forest areas, or do timber stand improvement. 
If you are already taking steps to improve the condition of your land, chances are CSP can help find new ways to meet your goals. Hey folks, we all live in an unperfect world. Maybe you have a little bit of real and sheet erosion. This is starting to get a little bit deeper than desired, of course. But if you have this anywhere on your operation, on your farm ground, on your recreational property, there's programs and, and other cost share available to potentially help fix this. This is critical area planting with a little bit of mulch and we'll be able to get a good conservation cover or some other type of cover coming on up through this. Hey folks, like I said, it's not a perfect world out there. We have some gully erosion starting here. Maybe you have one on your ag operation or your range or pasture or maybe even on your recreational property. Things happen. But this is a good opportunity to bring in our highly skilled engineers and let them do a structure. Maybe it's a grade stabilization structure with some critical area planting and some mulch. But this can be an expensive fix if you do it on your own. So equip here I think is a great option for you. So why don't you come in and talk to us. We're here another real world situation. We got a little erosion on this logging road. The vast majority of erosion environmental concerns comes from logging roads, not from the timber harvested in the forest. So this is what happened here. So what do landowners do? Well, you wanna work with your forest management plan rider first and get those logging roads in the place where they need to be. And we can potentially look at forest trails and landings as a conservation practice. This is probably going to need some critical area planning and some mulch to repair this. And we might have to work with the engineers on getting water bars, broad base dips also repaired on our logging roads and get some real good perennial cover here. It can be fixed though. So maybe your forestry and wildlife objectives Are like this where you want to have some type of forest opening and some early successional habitat. If we go this way you'll see that we have lots of early successional habitat and that's our 647 early successional habitat development and management practice where we take a percentage of these trees on the edge and you have this really soft edge. There's tons of cover there folks. I've been in it. It looks fantastic. If we go back over here, now this isn't a true hard edge, but you do see the difference in just where we didn't have this edge feathering. It's a little bit younger forest. It's not quite there yet to do that. So think about those things because those are great opportunities in EQIP and CSP. Hey folks, I want to talk about our Upland Wildlife Habitat Management Practice, available in a variety of programs like EQIP and CSP. And what a fantastic stand we have on this little forest opening of crimson clover. It's full of honeybees and there's some other native pollinators in here. I've seen some butterflies, but this is just a great opportunity for you as a wildlife or a landowner to really put some good cover on, on your property. We're here in a stream. We've got a, a crossing. This is the NRCS practice code stream crossing it's needed here this has not been done this is something that we're getting a little erosion here this is something that our engineers can uh, really dive into and come up with a really nice engineering plan maybe get some geotextile and some rock in here and make this a really good um, stream crossing so we keep the sediment and sand silt out of our rivers and streams we're here again with one of my favorite conservation practices. This is conservation practice 386, also known as field borders. We have a crop field here. It's been sprayed on the left, but we had an area here that just wasn't productive. Everyone has that. Not very many edges around a crop field are 100% productive. And we had this old saying, farm the best, buffer the rest. And that's what we did here. This is just a great wide, CP33 CRP buffer that has been planted in a mixture of native grasses and forbs. It's all dormant now, so it's hard to see which forbs are in here, but we've got some tall ones you see, and you see a lot of the switchgrass here 
that's providing a lot of cover. There's nesting birds in here right now. And there's also nesting wild turkeys. I've seen them go in here. So great conservation practice for all producers, landowners, and wildlifers. We have so many opportunities for the landowner and participant to do a wide variety of conservation practices on their cropland like I'm standing in now. Everything from cover crops to conservation cover in a wide variety of programs. Some of our more popular ones are the pollinator or monarch habitat mixes that we develop through our conservation practice cover. So think about that when you have big big fields and you're trying to develop a little bit of wildlife cover or you just simply want to make the field more productive like what we showed you with the field border. We're in an area that was harvested uh, pretty intensely probably 15 to 18 years ago by the previous landowner but the good thing is we've got a lot of young oaks that are coming up in this stand. I marked a few of them here now. Perfect situation if your forest management plan called for crop tree release. It's a great fit for our CSP program. We can release these trees and really change the forest instead of waiting 40 years for the forest to change itself. Are you farming in a bottomland that is too wet or is flooding maybe taking your crop? Or maybe you just like managing for waterfowl, shorebirds, and other wetland wildlife? If that's you, then you might be the perfect application for the wetland reserve easements. And it's found underneath the Agricultural Conservation Easement Program. This was formerly known as WRP, but is now enrolled in WRE. And we have a conservation practice here that's wetland restoration. We also have wetland enhancement. We've got dikes, we've got water control structures, just a great opportunity for landowners who love to manage for wetlands and wetland waterfowl. Folks, thanks for coming along on my wildlife and forestry tour today. And I wanna to say a special thanks to Ginger and all the folks at UT Extension for helping make this video a reality. And we went over a lot of different conservation practices, a lot of different programs. If you have any questions, Go visit your USDA service center, go to our website, and go to our NRCS YouTube channel, and have a good day.